everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Yaje if you're new here you're welcome to all of you my returning subscribers you are welcome just a quick reminder if you're not yet subscribed to this channel go ahead and click on that red subscribe button and after that hit on the notification bell so that each time I upload a new video you get notified instantly It's finally Monday and I'm done with the Chevron Houston Marathon and as you can see I am wearing my finisher shirt right here. I'm so excited that I finally trained and then actually went through you know running the marathon. As promised here is a race report. I always like to look back when I start on a project I like to look back and see what I did right what I did wrong, what lessons could be learned. Hopes that, you know, if you ever think you want to try a marathon, you can know exactly what to expect. I set my alarm for 4.30 in the morning, and then I usually like to take a shower and, you know, use my perfume. I don't put makeup on when I'm going to run like that, but I try to use a little bit of sunscreen because you're going to be out there. and. As I already shared the night before, I had already laid out what I was going to wear in the morning. So when I jumped out of bed, which I really didn't get enough sleep, it's difficult to sleep, to get enough sleep on, you know, the day off. So it's just, it's just difficult because you're worried about what is going to happen. And so because your biology is not quite the same, it's hard to sleep. So, but I did my best to sleep, got around three hours of sleep. My alarm went off at 4.30 a.m. It was cold, so I finally peeled myself out of bed, jumped in the shower, took a quick shower, and then dressed up and left the house. So my tradition is I usually stop at this gas station and buy a cup of coffee. I need my coffee in the morning, you know, I, that's just how I roll. So I got my coffee, I was going there, all by myself people are usually sleeping when I'm out there sometimes people come with me but this time I didn't bother anybody so I went all by myself did the 30 minutes ride to uh, downtown Houston I got there um, this time I was trying not to pay for any parking so since I got there early enough I looked for a back street parking somewhere and parked along the street it was free so now I had to walk from wherever I parked to where you know we you, you do like a gear check and where all the runners and the spectators kind of gather and then you you later on move to the start line anyway so I parked there and then we walked to I walked, there were other runners as well, to, to the race ground, which is the George R. Brown Convention Center. That's where everybody gathers. So traditionally, you know, um, I also go to a Hilton hotel that is nearby to just use the bathroom again. This thing is like every opportunity you get to use the bathroom, you do that. So I like to go to the Hilton, you know, they have clean restrooms and they also have coffee over there. So I went there, used the restroom, took some pictures, got some more coffee, and then walked back to the George R. Brown Convention Center. I'm about to head to the GRB, George R. Brown. Um, from there, we go to the start line. It's around 6.30 now. It's cold. There's a wind chill. I have used the restrooms. I've had coffee again. I am waking in my boots, literally shaking. Um, and my only strategy is to cross the finish line, like I said earlier. So, yeah, let's go do this. So, when I got there, um, it was only like 25 minutes before the people in my corral, you know, because there are so many people, we don't all start at once. They kind of like position, um, they kind of place people in, in a corral based on, on their previous race time. So this time I fell into corral B. Corral A are for the fastest people, so they go first. And then corral B is the next C, D, E, get the, get the idea. So I was in corral B. So now 
we have to walk from the George R. Brown all the way to the corrals, which I promise you is probably at least half a mile of walk. And it's cold and the windshield was out there and we're all quaking in our boots. But it's nice. It's just some energy, some, some energy that comes with, you know, the crowd, people united for the same goal. So we walked to the corrals. By the time we got there, Coral A had left. So I missed the national anthem. And so we just, you know, people were trying to place themselves according to a pacing group. I didn't want to run according to no pacing group. My only plan for this race was run. Uh, that Martin Luther King quote is ironic because today's Martin Luther King. I think it's run. I was going to run if I could no longer run I would walk and if I couldn't walk I would crawl but by God I was gonna cross the finish line and get this right here so that was my strategy while listening to my body so I didn't want to pay attention to nobody's pacing whatever I run anybody's race so I was feeling good and listening to an audio book I was listening to an audio book, um, Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday for the like fifth time while running. And I thought that I would be able to get my phone and take pictures and take videos for this vlog right here. But it was so cold and my fingers were so numb and I just could not be messing around with my phone and running and put it, putting the phone back in my fanny pack and all of that. So I ended up not taking too many videos. I was just in my zone doing my thing, feeling good. The first 13 miles were, were okay, you know, I was doing on that sub 10, sub 10 miles, which was fine. I didn't want to push myself too much and stuff. Um, so my daughter, one of my, my daughters, and if you don't know, I have three kids, twin girls, um, and one little boy, the girls are 19. So one of my daughters goes to school at Rice University and, um, the, the marathon course goes through right so the plan was for her to come and wait for me somewhere and just maybe take me a picture videos whatever so as i approached rice i i called her to you know walk towards the area where we plan to meet anyway long story short she didn't think i would be there by that time or whatever so we ended up almost missing each other i couldn't go there now and be waiting for her because that, that's counting against me once you start the clock is on it doesn't stop for you to say hello to people take pictures or use the bathroom or anything like that once you start the clock is on so i got around the rice area she came and she couldn't you know she was rushing as well so she just tried to take me some pictures from a distance so yeah so that's how i didn't get too many pictures anyway Go past mile 13, I started to feel the tiredness and everything set in. But my goal was I was just going to try to pace myself and not walk if I didn't really have to walk. Because the moment you start to walk, your tiredness really just kicks in now in full gear. And now you have, what, 13 more miles to go. You're going to walk for 13 miles. You'll be out there forever. So I just decided that I would just keep pushing myself, keep pushing myself, do what I needed to do. And, you know, at that point I stopped listening to the audio book and switched it to the, um, to music, a playlist that I have put together. So I was listening to that and everything was hurting. And I had to use the bathroom like two times, which has never happened before on the course. That really reminded me that, yeah, yeah, Jay, you're not that young anymore. <laughs> you're not that young anymore. You know, continence, incontinence issues. You really have to use the bathroom when you have to use the bathroom. Anyway, so I kept pushing and just praying for somebody to give me a banana for the energy. And I pushed and I pushed and I pushed. Next thing I know, I was in the downtown area. At some point, I was basically just bouncing. Just bouncing I'm like okay actually bouncing is better than walking so I will just keep bouncing one foot after the other and then you know I will catch a second wind of energy and I will push it a little bit and catch it just like that well, then you should be running the marathon I mean if you if you run 
that much a day. You should do the marathon. Mm -hmm. She says she's been thinking about it, but uh, I've never really had time to do it. Hey! Yeah, there you go. Uncle, take a picture. Uncle, take, take a picture. picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I have a video. <laughs> Go! The next thing I know, I'm in downtown Houston crossing the finish line. Crossing the finish line, all for this medal. And then, you know, once you cross the finish line, you then just keep walking until you find people that give medals. Oh my gosh! You're a rock star! Oh my gosh! You keep walking back into the George R. Brown where you go get your finisher shirt. No, I can take uh I'm gonna need that. Take it. Have a good day. Thank you. And the mug that I just showed you. And then I found my daughter. She had somebody who brought her downtown. So we found each other and um, got in the car. And I drove home to my family, to a warm house, to do the one eggs and a bunch of other stuff that I ate that I would not even bother you with. But I couldn't just stop eating and I ate and ate and ate and yeah so marathon number 10 full marathon number 10 is in the books so if you're wondering the time I'll share with you is public information all you need is my babe number you can find out the time so I did the marathon in four hours and 32 minutes a long distance runner for life because there's so many lessons that you learn from being out there on the course you know lessons that translate directly into the into life you know thank you all for anybody that said good luck with your race i appreciate that anybody that said congratulations i thank you so much it does mean a lot you know any cheers all the people that were out there cheering for all the runners you know complete strangers people that were trying to say my name out there on the course you know houston is a great city so Thank you Chevron for putting together an awesome race. Um, it's, I've seen it grow over 10 years and it gets better and better and better and more efficient. So I'm very grateful for that and I'm grateful for my support system and for my family, for my husband, for um, letting me go chase my passion out there on the road, on the run. Thank you so much and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye bye.